know, it's inevitable with every episode of Thrifts, there's going to be somebody asking, why do you go to so many Goodwills, go other places? And <laughs> I wish I had more options as far as thrift stores. They're just the dominant chain in this area. So that's why I go to so many Goodwills. However, today I have found somewhere that's a little bit different than a Goodwill. In fact, it's a little bit different than your normal thrift store. You'll see what I mean as the episode proceeds. So yeah, let's go thrifting. As is tradition at this point, we're starting at a Goodwill. This one with the lucky rock out front. Here, have an offering of a dollar. We'll see if that helps. Mm, I guess not, because the first thing I see when I walk in is this. Oh, this really sucks. This doesn't though, although the price is a bit much, 150 bucks. Vintage record player, it says. Well, yes, it is that and much more. Turns out it is a General Electric all-in-one transistor radio slash phonograph player with hookups and adjustments for all sorts of things, really, in a pretty neat little wooden package. Well, it's not little, it's, it's substantial. You got this fold-out record player down here. That's just a neat design and a lot smaller than the gigantic stereo floor units that I often see at Goodwill's. Over in the glass cases, we have glass case things, including the expected cameras of dubious desirability, along with one of these things, an electromechanical deluxe computer baseball game, probably from the mid 70s, 1976-77. I have another version of something like this. They're pretty neat. I thought this guy was pretty friggin' cool. Really fascinating display going on there with the dials that almost, I thought it was like an oscilloscopy kind of thing at first, but it doesn't appear to be. Still, with the crosshairs, it looks like something that should be on some sort of aircraft. I like it. Over with the newbies and flashlights, I saw this little thing. A Vivitar digital camera, which I swear is the cheapest thing I have ever felt. It just feels like nothing. Runs on triple A's, has a USB connection, internal memory, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna get it because it's cheap in just every sense of the word. So much so that I'm curious. So this little thing on the shelf below that and was curious because of the brand Agfa. This is an Agfa Lux. It is a flash module that actually folds open, although I didn't get that on video. Yeah, I don't see too many Agfa things, much less these old flash bulb modules like this, so yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Now this caught my attention. This is a Skyrider bike. I don't know much about bikes, but something about this really drew me in. The red, the design, the way the spokes look, the chain protector, just all of it. They were asking $99 for it. Who knows if that was a good deal. Either way, I thought it looked cool. Well, here's something that I know a little bit more about. <laughs> Over in the CDs, I saw a copy of Battle Bugs, an MS-DOS strategy game where you control a bunch of insects and it was released by Sierra back in the day. I do have another version of this already, but I know someone who's looking for a copy, so I picked this up, it was five bucks. And then over in the puzzles and board games today, there was quite a bit to choose from for someone such as me. Looks like they'd just gotten in a bunch of boxed PC software, some Macintosh stuff. Expert Landscape, Virtual PC, Nero 6 Ultra, Omniform, Adobe Acrobat 4, you know, a bunch of stuff that I don't want, but a few things that I did and ended up picking up. I was also very close to picking up this right here, KeyCAD Complete for the Macintosh. I don't know, I'm not really big on Macintosh stuff. I would have bought this if it was for DOS, but it's just an early, early soft key product. I don't see many of these in the box at all. All right, on to another Goodwill, and hmm, it's quite nice outside today. I'm enjoying. And inside the glass case is a sword. <laughs> I don't know if this is like from some property of something. It's a hundred bucks. I'm sure someone can tell me like what this is, or maybe it's just one of those generic ones that you find at like the beach from some guy that smells like hot dogs. Checking out the glass case near the registers, and yeah, I'm seeing a lot of these cheapo VR headsets show up now. They're littering Goodwills. And some console games, whatever, nothing I need. However, this got my attention. This is a Tomitronic Slimline Speedway. For one thing, I love this case. And for another, I don't know, it's just one of those early portable monochrome black and white electronic games. Only thing holding me back was the price of 25 bucks, which actually wasn't that bad once I got home and looked it up, but oh well. Heading to the back part of the store and uh, <laughs> what in the world? Look at this industrial steampunk looking beast. It's some gigantic saw thing. Oh, it's just a craftsman band saw. Yeah, whatever, I just don't see like exposed saw blades at Goodwill very often. Over on this end cap over here, I saw a copy of Semantic PC Anywhere 32 version 8. And you know, I do like to pick up software like this if it's in a big box, but my personal rule is like, if unless it's version 1 or 2 of the product, I don't really care. I don't know, it's just what I like. 
Mm, got a couple of Sims 3 things in here, a dollar fifty each, and a copy of Duke Nukem 3D. Nice. Always happy to come across this. I don't know, it's still exciting for some reason. I've played it a million times, I have a million copies, but it doesn't matter. It just makes me happy to see. And I'm not sure if this makes me happy to see, but there's definitely something I'm feeling when I'm seeing this banana sitting on a knife display stand. It's like carved out of a piece of tree. This is so confusing and it's just classic Goodwill. Ooh, there's a whole stack of 45s down here with their sleeves. That's actually not the most common thing, at least in my experience. I usually see 45s just sort of shuffling up against each other, getting all scratched without any sleeves. I'm not a huge collector of them. I pick them up every so often, but the fact that they had all the sleeves, I appreciate that, whoever owned these last. And as soon as I left filming this, some guy bought all of them at once. So I guess there was something good in there. Hmm, what is this? Looks like old tech. Cine Kodak Editing Kit 16mm, alright, mmm, well, unfortunately all of the stuff that used to be in here is pretty much gone, at least all the good stuff. Not that I would have gotten it anyway, but you know, whatever. Still though, neat case, I appreciate the packaging. And you know I appreciate this 8-track player over here. Shiny chrome and black and some wood grain, Oh yes. Sweet looking knobs and switches and dials. Rarely do I bring kit like this home, but man are they enjoyable to admire. Yeah, the shelf below that, and I thought this was kind of fascinating. This is a Radio Shack telephone. Yeah, like telephone without the H. Essentially a Rolodex, and you just put in like contacts, phone numbers and stuff, and then you can key them up with those letters down there and it'll sort to them automatically. Analog tech like this fascinates me. Kind of like flip clocks and you know, just anything like that. Flippy things, they're neat. And I thought this was just a clock, but it turns out it is much more than that. This right here is the timer, model number X10-TC262. And yes, this is an X10 compatible device for all of you oddware viewers out there. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but that's why I bought it, because I want to try it with my existing X10 system, because I have that going where I can control a lot of stuff in my house with my MS-DOS computer, and if I can make more things happen with this timer, definitely getting this. As I was leaving, I noticed this ad for the Goodwill Color Me Goodwill Fashion Show. That just sounds fantastic somehow. Okay, under the tree to another Goodwill. Here we go. Ooh, hey, in the puzzles and board games, I see a learning company logo. What is this? Nothing. Yeah, I like a lot of learning company games, but when they started getting into this territory of just like straight up education, nah, man, I want that edutainment. So this was kind of interesting. This is a Sharp Aquos AVC system. Maybe the TV went with it and nobody knew what it went with. Like Sharp Aquos is a series of TVs. This is the control box that goes with the TV. So <laughs> seeing them separate is kind of odd. I do wonder if there's any use for this outside of its intended situation. Now this, this was much more tempting. This is a Sony SL2400 Betamax VCR. I dug a lot about this, except that it was not in great shape, and when I turned it on, the mechanism was making some strange noises. It might have just needed new belts or something, I don't know. Either way, I didn't get this one. One of them though, one of these days. Up above that, I saw a typewriter that caught my attention because, I mean, look at the design of this thing. Green topped keys. Now those just look friggin' cool. It's an Olivetti Underwood Praxis 48. If I could get a modern mechanical keyboard with those key tops, I totally would. And as I was about to leave the store, I saw this here, which was, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it struck me as oddly melancholy and kind of sad. Unanswered prayers. Maybe it's supposed to be encouraging because it was empty, so it's like all your prayers have been answered, but at the same time, it's just like, are you supposed to put your unanswered prayers in there? I don't know, it's making me think too much. And finally, one more goodwill here, and it's this one. And inside the glass case, <laughs> I don't know, man. This scouring pad holder just caught my attention. I'll hold your scouring pad. How direct and oddly friendly. Oh, and hey, look, it's one of our local mascots. The tourist baseball team has a moon? For a mascot? I don't know what the story is behind that, but he's a little disturbed. Whoa, check out this very green upright piano. It almost looks like it was painted by hand way after the fact. Maybe it was. Either way though, a pretty old thing. They were asking 95 bucks for it. I do not recognize the brand, but I'm sure someone in the comments will enlighten. Over in the junk, I found some junk and a PC game here. A kid's game, which is Stanley Tiger Tales. Never heard of this, but it was in a big box. I liked that, but yeah, you know, whatever. I don't know anything about it, so I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> I did kind of want this though. <laughs> this is a, a Wendy's Burger Magic 8 Ball. But I did ask it whether this very video would reach a million views, and burger sources say no. 
is the result. So, oh well, I tried. And check these things out. <laughs> Saw the Panasonic logo, but I was like, what the heck? Are they pencil sharpeners? Nope. They are closed circuit security cameras, complete with some of the equipment as well. Man, I don't know what kind of age these are, but I kind of like the retro design going on. Robot. And the last thing of note here was this ShredX Watergate Paper Shredder. I don't know if that's the best or the worst name for a paper shredder. Either way though, uh, props to the marketing department on that one. And then last up for today, I just ran across this store as I was driving around and was instantly intrigued. It didn't have a sign out front, no name, anything. I couldn't even find it on Google Maps. It seems they're in some sort of a transitionary period from old owners to the new ones, so maybe it'll have a name later on. Seems that it used to be called Third Hand Co-op. It's not really a thrift store or an antique store, it's sort of a, just a junk shop. There are a bunch of these around me, but this one, they just had so much junk outside that I'm like, man, who knows what's inside? So I stopped and gave it a look and was instantly impressed with just the sheer amount of stuff. I'm just kind of gonna gloss over a lot of this here because this place was huge. Every square foot had at least one thing of interest. There's a brownie Kodak camera in there randomly. Nothing is really sorted exactly. Like some things are together like the music and the movies, but then there's just random sections of model cars and then other stuff thrown elsewhere that doesn't really belong anywhere, but it could if they organized it, but most of it is just not organized, at least not right now. I myself spent about an hour just browsing this place, so uh, suffice to say this will be heavily edited, and I just want to show a few of the things that were of interest to me. Random electronics in here, VCRs and tape players, that kind of thing. But yeah, this place has a little bit of everything I could think of. From glassware, to pith helmets, to paintings, to gardening shears, gas pumps, desk fans, pillows, baskets. A lot of toys, a lot of really weird knick-knack type of stuff. Most of it seeming to be from like the 1970s to the mid-2000s. Most of it's not the kind of stuff that I would buy, but I did find a few things of note. Starting with this desk lamp and, <laughs> you know, it's just a lamp, but yeah, I don't know. There's something about the design of these kind of things in particular. I've always enjoyed them. I have one at home, but this one looked a little different, so I liked it. And then, ooh, I saw vacuum tubes and some kind of freaky looking General Electric stuff going on. What is this? Well, it's a piece of furniture that is a radio. I don't really know any exact model numbers or a whole lot about it, but they were asking $125 for it, and yeah, it had one of those early 20th century designs. Almost art deco, maybe not, I don't know, it looks cool though. A lot of camera, uh, like photography and video stuff was just hanging around all over the place. Lens kits and camera bodies, bulbs and film canisters and reels and just all sorts of things. And then just like cases of this kind of stuff. It's just like, what is this? Victorinox knives and doorknobs? Yeah, why not? I quite enjoyed their different toy sections though. I had a whole bunch of wienermobiles in here. And a bunch of model cars and vehicles and planes of different eras and types. One of those re-released Mattel Classic Sports TV games. It's just random stuff, man. And I thought this wood grain clad box over here was a speaker at first, but nope. It's a Com Air Eagle 2500 air purifier. <laughs> I'm almost intrigued by an air purifier of this age. It seems like it'd work either too well or not at all. And man, check this thing out. This is a Grundig Majestic Radio, made in West Germany, it said. Now, I know this is a more common brand in the UK and parts of Europe, but I've never once seen anything of this brand or anything that even looks like this, like the style of this thing here in the US. Just what a cool design. It's $125, it obviously needs some work, but man, am I tempted just because it looks so unique. Speaking of unique, I mean, you just never know what you'll find in this place. Check out this old box of like first aid supplies. The top of it said Bell South First Aid Kit. And then, uh, well, I don't recommend smelling the ammonia tablets. <coughs> that was the worst, instant regrets. And then just as I was about to start getting to the real electronics sections, my camera glasses died. And I don't just mean like the batteries ran out, it just died. So yeah, I'm gonna have to get some new ones for further episodes, but I was able to just pick back up filming with my cell phone for a little bit here. And yeah, there's just stuff packed in here. Like I really hope that they get around to organizing sometime because I don't know, I feel like I'm missing a lot of things. Who knows what's hidden behind these buckets and bedposts. 
because look at what's out on top here. Check out this Pioneer tape recorder. I just love this design. If this were in better shape, or if I thought that I could restore it and get like the little switches and knobs and stuff that need to be replaced and the tape mechanism, I would totally buy this for 32 bucks. But yeah, I don't know. As it is, I don't have the time, which is why I pass up on all sorts of things like this. But yeah, there is more to see. Like this up front, which I saw as soon as I walked in and had to go back and check it out. This is a complete inbox, as far as I can tell, brand new inbox, Pioneer LaserDisc player, a CLD D701. The people here said that it was untouched as far as they knew, brand new in the box, still has everything sealed up. Now, they wanted $750 for it, but when I saw what else it came with for that price, I can kind of see why. There were also around 500 sealed LaserDisc products. Now, I'm saying products because, I mean, there were movies, there were TV shows, there were sports specials, there were random reports, there were interactive games, there were X-rated movies, there were just a ton of things. I have never come across a LaserDisc selection this large in one spot just out in the wild like this, so I'm still thinking about it. It's a bad idea. I don't need this, right? I don't need this. This was a truly unique selection, and th that Pioneer LaserDisc player alone in the box? One of those sold recently for $230 plus 70 bucks shipping on eBay. Anyway, I'll think about it, but in the meantime, I was looking around the rest of the store because there are yet more electronics. And dude, like, like look at this thing. This is a BMC brand BM-12A computer monitor. Yeah, that's right. This is made for like Apple IIs. It's a green phosphor monochrome screen. Just got the one composite input at the top there and some vertical and horizontal adjustments and things like that. But yeah, this would be great for certain older computers. I might go back and get this. And holy crap, if I ever need a VHS VCR, I know where I'm coming first. They have just tons of them everywhere. And record players and tape decks and just all kinds of things that you rarely see at once in a Goodwill. Like this Toshiba satellite receiver down here. I wonder what kind of display used to be on the front there. I like the way that little screen looks. Had one of these neat little realistic weather radios. They usually come in a cube form, but this one was more rectangular and had this little dial on front that looked neat. And there's this Micronta something antenna switch. I don't even friggin' know what, but it looks cool. And another video cipher too over here. This one is a Tracker System X. This is why junk shops like this are awesome. You just absolutely do not know what you'll find. Like this guy right here. This is a Philips CDI. The compact disc interactive multimedia CD player game console thing. It's one of the first models, the 220, and they were only asking $4 for it. Yes, yeah, so the little door on front doesn't stay closed anymore and it doesn't come with the cables or controllers, but you know, whatever, man, I do not care. Four bucks, you can hardly ask for a better price for a friggin' CDI. And that is all for this episode of LGR Thrifts. In this episode, I'm quite happy with these things. A boxed copy of Battlebugs for a friend, a copy of Expert Landscape, a DOS landscaping software, why not? A boxed copy of Connectix Virtual PC, an X10 timer unit, a Vivitar piece of crap cheapo camera that is unbelievably cheap, a friggin' Philips CDI, oh, good grief, I still can't believe I found that for four bucks, and lastly, a copy of Nero 6 Ultra Edition in the big box, which I used a ton as a younger lad to do totally legitimate backups. But I never had the box. I always wanted the box. Now I have the box. And a couple little things here. That camera, it turns out, it has some sort of stupidly tiny USB connection. I've never seen a USB that small. I'm gonna have to find one. I will be trying the X10 timer probably in a video in the future. And I haven't tried the Philips CDI yet because I don't have the controllers or any software or anything like that. So I just got to get all that kind of stuff. And one more thing, as I was editing this episode together, I just had to go back out and grab that little monitor. There wasn't a price tag on there, but I got to talking to one of the employees and they were like, ah, I think it was 30 bucks at one point. And I was noticeably disappointed, but they're like, ah, we'll do 10 bucks, how's that? And I'm like, yep, sounds good to me. And it powered on, didn't explode or anything like that at the store, so it seemed promising. Took it home and hooked up a Sega Genesis just to try it out, and hooray, it works just fine. It does, of course, need a good cleaning, but overall, it's in pretty good shape, I think, and the aesthetic of this is just highly appealing, so I'm happy with it. 
And aesthetically, all of your finds look fantastic as well. Thank you very much for sending all of these in over the past couple months or whatever it's been since episode 38. As always, I'm still going thrifting all the time, but I don't consistently find enough things to make a video as often as I would like. So my apologies for that as usual, but new thrifting episodes are always in the works. So feel free to keep continuing to send your photos and all that kind of good stuff, as well as your general support <laughs> asking for more thrifts because that is seriously encouraging. So thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.